Just put coffee and whiskey on your chicken. And I promise you, the result will blow your mind. A big thanks to Cheddar Chef for sponsoring this episode. If you like whiskey and coffee, this is the recipe for you. And that means probably all of the Irish are gonna love this because, oh, no, they're not going to love this. Sorry, Scottish whiskey. So for the Scottish people, you're gonna love this. The biggest question in your life, can you use a single malt whiskey from Ireland, from Scotland, in your Irish whiskey? Find out in the comments, probably someone will answer that question for us. <laughs> but without a doubt, the combination of these two ingredients is going to make a delicious recipe. We need to make some coffee first, so let's fire up the barbecue. This is the Cheddo Chef Boma Grill. It's a South African grill with a really large surface to cook on. It's going to be absolutely perfect for grilled chicken. You're going to get that nice crust on the outside. That's why I love this thing so much. But to get it fired up, I need to make some Kindle first. I'm starting by making some Kindle out of birch wood. I'm chopping it up into fine pieces and then build them up into a stack. Adding in some fire starters, lighting them up, and let it burn down. And once it's almost burned down to embers, I'm going to add a hardwood. I'm using beech wood because it gives me the perfect burning embers. Now I have a beautiful base fire. The heat that comes off this is insane. There's a lot of radiation that comes off these embers and that little fire. And that is what hardwood does. It burns with a slow fire, but it has intense amount of energy. Now, if you look at the flat top grill, it, mm, it looks kind of gnarly. I wouldn't want to cook on it like this. So I'm going to take my wire brush and just brush off a little bit of that dirt of the last cook, a little bit of that rust that sits on top, brush off the leftover dust, cleaning it up completely. Wait until you see the results when we actually start seasoning it. Look at that, it completely transforms making it look like a really nice, well-seasoned flat top griddle. And I'm gonna do this a couple of times, two, three times to get it nice and non-stick. So now it's time to make some coffee. And I'll be doing that using one of these Italian style coffee makers. A little bit of water, filter in, coffee on top. Oop, I should tap it. And then screw the top on. And now I'm gonna set it close to the fire, let it come up to a boil. Scrape a little bit of embers, a little bit of the heat from the fire underneath the pot. While we wait for that coffee, we're going to make another part of this recipe, which is the Pitmasterix Texas Beef Rub. I'm gonna make a double portion, starting with two tablespoons of table salt, four tablespoons of ground black pepper, half a tablespoon of garlic powder, and half a tablespoon of onion powder. This is a bowl of chicken thighs. It's about three kilogram in total. We got the chicken thigh, which is the best part of the chicken because it has red meat, and we got some fat on it. And fat means it will render down and become absolutely freaking tasty and juicy. Now, since I got a whole bowl full of it and I don't want to just throw it on the grill and have bland chicken, I am going to brine this chicken. That's two shots of espresso and two shots of whiskey that I'm adding to this chicken. That's going to be the main flavorizer of this dish. But of course, I'm going to do more. It's not just going to be that whiskey and that coffee, which is going to have trouble penetrating the meat of the chicken. I need an agent to get all that flavor inside. And that's why we have this, our Texas beef barbecue rub. This contains salt and loads of it. So I'm gonna take half the amount of Texas barbecue beef rub, sprinkle it onto my chicken. Now I have about 100 milliliter of fluids with my chicken and I'm going to add 150 more. That totals up to 250 milliliters, which is about a cup. Now I'm gonna mix this all in. I'm gonna let it sit for at least two hours before we start cooking. And while we wait, we're not gonna drink the bottle of whiskey. No, it's not gonna happen. We're gonna be drunk before, before we eat anything. That's not smart. We first eat and then we drink. That's why we gotta make a barbecue sauce to make that chicken even more delicious. And this is gonna be our new recipe. It's going to be the chicken sauce. I thought that was the, the best name I could come up with for this sauce, chicken sauce. And it starts by putting a cup of ketchup in a hot pan. To that, I'm gonna add a shot of espresso, a shot of whiskey, oh boy. Two tablespoons of Worcester sauce and a tablespoon of the Texas beef rub. Slide it over the fire, let it come up to a boil and let it reduce by half. Then your chicken sauce is done, of course. 
we're gonna put this on skewers while cooking this because if we use skewers then we can put it over the fire direct right here where the flames are and we can put them on the flat top griddle so you get both of the beautiful things of this grill both cooking technique and both flavor profiles so let's get the chicken out skewer it up and therefore i'm going to take my chicken thigh and roll it up so it becomes a little bowl like that and then i'm going to skewer it and if you're cooking for friends and family you know that sizzle is going to attract some people it attracts everybody it's the magic sound I don't want to overdo it with the amount of chicken that I put on. You see, now I have movability. I can move it around, hit the fire everywhere, and I can put it on the flat top griddle. I'm not going to start on the flat top griddle part. I'm going to start over the fire. To do that, I'm going to rig the firewood to one side, take off a little bit of those embers and spread them out. I only need a thin layer of embers to provide me heat. And then I can put the chicken over the fire like this and just let it sit there and roast. Look at that. Got a crispy bits turning up on the outside. And then we're going to just keep on rotating it until they're fully cooked. Now you might wonder, <laughs> Pitmaster, how are you going to know that? Well, life is simple. Technology is on your side. Just stick in a thermometer all the way in. And then you got to consider this to be a roast. And then you will know when it's done. Now normally I would never ever put a thermometer like that direct over the fire because there's a battery inside. But if you have a low fire like this, you know you can do it because it's well protected. We got a surrounding temperature of 164 degrees Celsius, which is basically roasting temperatures. We got a target core temperature of 75 degrees Celsius and currently we're running at 42. This is how we know when this is going to be done. And you can see that the temperature is not too high for the thermometer, but make sure you keep your eye on it while cooking over direct heat. We're almost at a core temperature of 60 degrees Celsius. And as you can see, we're picking up so much flavor from that smoke from the sizzle everything with the wood fire it's just creating flavor on our chicken but now we want a little bit more of that caramelization that good stuff that Maillard effect now we're moving over to the flat top griddle for that sizzle and these two techniques combined is going to make your chicken the best chicken that anybody's ever had all right if you don't believe me give it a try the chicken is at around 70 degrees and we build up this beautiful crust. Can we take a moment to appreciate the crust? And there's nothing better to get a good Maillard effect than the flat top griddle. I'm going to take my brush and I'm going to brush on that chicken sauce. Oh, and do you think I should tell them? The chicken sauce is a brushing sauce. It's not a dipping sauce. It is quite spicy and quite intense in flavor. And that makes it perfect for brushing. Because while we're brushing, we're adding so much flavor to it. But you can't just stick your chicken in and eat it and expect it yourself to be fine. Expect some hurt. And when it's done, it looks like this. And if you're a freak like me, you're going to sprinkle on a little bit of more of that Texas barbecue rub just to boost that flavor a little bit more. And then you're going to let it sit for around five minutes so it can rest a little bit. And then it's time to slice into it. Oh, look at that. That is so juicy and so tender and so tasty. That is some mighty fine chicken. Even got a little bit of smoke ring. This is gonna be so good and so tasty. And those end bits, those are the best. They're crunchy, crispy, a little bit blackened. Now there's only one thing left to do, eating all of it. Mm. Oh my God. I don't know where to begin, but it's like drinking whiskey and coffee at the same time while eating chicken. You gotta have these bits with a little bit of that chicken sauce on. That sauce is absolute magic, real intense. And that's exactly what chicken needs. Now, of course, if you wanna make this at home, we've written down the recipe for you. You know where to find it. See you guys in the next one, or on the website.